Hello everyone, it's vacuum of the month time again. In this video I'm going to give you my opinions on the Miele Dynamic U1 and of course I'll be taking the bag out and we'll weigh the dirt and see how much it's picked up over the course of November. And then I'll also reveal in this video what vacuum I'll be using for the month of December as voted by you. Right, before I reveal what the new vacuum will be, let's discuss the old one. Now this Miele is quite a large machine and it's pretty heavy, so it's not going to suit anyone who needs something very light that they just want to whip around the house with. If you want something made of quality materials, made in Germany, that's bagged and you want an upright, well, it is certainly worth considering, especially if you have larger areas of carpet to clean. I don't have a huge house, but it is on three floors and I've managed to clean everywhere with this. My kitchen floors, my bathroom floors, my stairs, my upholstery, everywhere. And it's done a fantastic job. Now, according to the EU label, it's not suitable for hard floors. I don't know if it failed the specific test, but I can tell you that cleaning hard floors, just regularly cleaning hard floors, it is fine and there's no scraping or scratching sounds when you're using on hard floor. I'm quite happy to use this on all my hard floors. It even works on lino that's not stuck down because you can turn the brush roll off, of course, but you can also alter the suction. Some cleaners can't cope very well with lino or vinyl floor that isn't stuck down. My old kitchen floor was like that and it was a nightmare to clean with many cleaners. But because you can turn down the suction on this, you can say put it onto the minimum setting with the brush roll off, you're probably fine. It'll be okay for your vinyl floors as well. It'll still pick up as long as you haven't got huge amounts of dirt, but everything that was on my kitchen floor, it picked up fantastically. The hose is very good as well on this machine. It's one of the best uprights I've used for above floor cleaning. It doesn't reach quite up to the top of the stairs with the hose, but it's such a solid machine. I feel quite safe to leave it near the top of the stairs while I clean the few stairs that it can't reach with the machine at the bottom. What I like about the Miele is the way that the hose comes out. So it looks quite short, but it does stretch a long way. And by the fact you can lock the hose, just by pushing it down, it makes the machine very, very stable. You can jiggle the hose about all the, all the way, you know, really jerk the hose around and the machine will just stay rock solid. Some machines topple over if you just slightly pull them on the hose, but the Miele just stays still. I mean, personally, I would rather have two machines, an upright for my carpets, and a cylinder machine to do my hard floors. Obviously, for some people, they can't afford two machines or they haven't got the space to store two machines. So this is one of the better machines as far as compromise goes. You've got a telescopic tube as well. You can put a hard floor tool available as an optional extra. It's quite short though, so you would probably have to stoop and bend a bit. But as I said, it's fine on hard floors unless you've got very, very delicate hard floors. You can safely use this on, on your hard floors. For stair cleaning, you can just attach this nozzle here. I did a few times, actually, it is a bit heavy to do it this way, but I actually lifted the machine a few times and cleaned the stairs using the electro brush to, you know, to really get the dirt out. But normally you wouldn't really do that. It's, it's not really designed to be used on stairs like that. As I said, it won't reach quite to the top, almost to the top, but because it's such a solid machine, as long as you don't have it teetering on the edge of your stair, you can, you know, do the rest of the, you can go halfway down the stairs with the machine safely at the top, but be, be careful, you know, common sense. You shouldn't really balance the vacuum above you when you're cleaning stairs. It's obviously not as convenient as a cylinder model or a handheld on stairs, but I do like the tool setup. I was able to do most of my nooks and crannies using the tools. So that's the Miele. As I said, I would recommend it if you've got a larger home and you don't mind the weight and bulk of this machine. Although it does have a decent carry handle at the back and it's a very solid vacuum cleaner. 
It is well made. You can see it's got also unusual for most vacuum cleaners nowadays, let alone an upright. It has a full sized crevice tool, a decent soft dusting brush as well. So I do like this vacuum cleaner. It's uh, German made and of course it's bagged, which personally I prefer bags. Some people like bagless machines, but the one thing I have enjoyed using this machine for the month of November is the fact I haven't had to empty it. I haven't even had to open the bag door to check the bag. I know it's not going to be full, um, but let's see how full it is, shall we? Let's weigh it out and see if this is going to be the current winner, which is the Cebo X7, another German bag machine. That's currently the winner picking up 330 grams of dirt over the course of the month it was used. So let's see how much dirt this Miele Dynamic U1 has picked up. Okay, let's uh, remove the bag. Uh, what the heck are you doing in there? Oh, I've had so much trouble with this. Elf on a shelf. Well, you should stay on your shelf. Yes, I know it. Well, it's not quite Christmas, is it? We're in December, but we've still got a long way to go. What? Oh, I can't repeat what he said to me. Well, I hope you've had fun in there. Well, he's still very clean anyway, so at least the, the bag has managed to filter out all the dirt. He's still got a clean face and Daisy is eyeing you up. So if you're a naughty little elf, I'll feed you to Daisy and you'll soon be a headless elf. All right, off you go. There we go. <sighs> so I do take my job very seriously. Now, here we are. Here's the bag. So they self seal, well, more or less, it's slightly open. They have a little flap here, a spring loaded flap that closes off. So there's no dirt uh, that flies out when you empty, well, dispose of the dirt. Um, <clears throat> the bags are very efficient at filtering because inside the bag compartment, it's spotlessly clean. You can see better on the white part, perhaps. There's no dust. No dust that I can see has got through that bag and any fine dust that gets through the bag is filtered again by the pre-motor filter here. And then finally, it's filtered by this HEPA filter. So this is a good machine if you've got allergies and you're not exposing yourself to too much dust when you dispose of the dirt. Like even the best bagless machines, dust does fly out when you empty them. You can't avoid it. Right, so here we go. It does feel pretty heavy. So I wonder if we're going to have a winner. Is this going to beat the Miele? Because I don't think it's going to beat December's vacuum of the month, which I'll be revealing in a minute. First of all, though, I need to empty, not empty, I've got to weigh. I've got to weigh an empty bag so we can deduct the weight of the empty bag from the full one so we can see how much dirt is inside. Okay, I've zeroed that. Let's see how much an empty U-style bag weighs. Whoops, try and center it. There we go. So an empty bag weighs 50 grams. So that's good. You can deduct 50 grams from whatever this bag weighs, a full bag. So this is a month of dirt. This is very, it's got a lot of fibrous dirt in it. In fact, that's probably due for a change. Right, let's try and balance it on there. Well, I am surprised. 290 grams. And of course, we need to deduct 50 grams from that. So it's actually picked up 240 grams of dirt as opposed to the SIBO that picked up 330 grams. So the SIBO so far before the end of the year is in the lead. I'm really surprised because I thought the Miele would beat it, to be honest, because you can just feel that it seems to be doing a good job when you're using it. You can hear the vibration on the carpet. You can feel that it's got some agitation. It certainly picks up the pet hair, which uh, you can see from all this fibrous, it's very soft like a pillow. So it'll probably have a lot of hair and fluff in it. So what a surprise. I was really expecting this Miele to take SIBO's crown because it certainly to me as a vacuumer feels more satisfying to use, you know? Well, 
blow me down with a feather. I'll pop the uh, pop the bag back in just for now, <clears throat> and then I'll be labelling that up with the month. And in the new year, you'll see all the dirt that I've picked up over the course of the year. I don't know if many people will have saved all the dirt they've cleaned out from their carpets and upholstery, but I have. And it's in the garage, fortunately, because it smells. I opened the box where all these bags were, and uh, it doesn't smell very pleasant, I can assure you. Okay then, that's the Miele, a good solid machine if you don't mind the weight and size. Let's see what's going to be cleaning my home for the month of December. Thank you for all your votes, by the way. I had 237 comments on that video where you could vote for vacuum of the month. Not all of them were votes, there were a few comments, but most of those were votes. Now, if you voted for more than one vacuum, you naughty people, I've taken your first choice as the vote. Okay, and I know some of you, I think, has voted more than once, but under different YouTube names. But anyway, I've taken it. I don't think it's going to affect the results, although it was pretty close. So, let's run through in descending order, which got the least votes. So, in 10th place, with only four votes, was the AEG Precision Brush Roll Clean Upright. So, few. I'm glad I didn't have to use that for a month, to be honest. <laughs> then, in ninth place, with six votes, was the Vax Blade Cordless. Again, pretty relieved I didn't have to use that. In 8th place was the American Hoover Concept 1 with 12 votes. I would have quite liked to have used that um, in a sort of a retro way. I enjoyed using my TurboMaster Total System earlier in the year, um, a very 80s vacuum. I enjoyed that, the nostalgia of that, and it did a fairly good job as well. But I would have enjoyed using the Concept 1, but that, that only got uh, 12 votes, as I said. Next, in seventh place, came the Bosch GS50, the bagless machine, with 16 votes. Then, another cleaner I would have quite liked to have used, the Sebo E3 Premium, that got 22 votes in sixth place. Now, in joint fifth place, both with 25 votes, were the Miele C3 Electro Line and the Shark Upright, the Apex style upright cleaner. So they were both really in fifth place. So there's no fourth place because we had a joint fifth. So in third place, another cleaner I would have liked to have used was the Panasonic Icon, very popular with 31 votes. In second place, with only one vote more, with 32 votes, was the Dyson Small Ball. And so that means in first place, we have the Roomba and the Shark handheld at 40 votes. So I'm going to have a more relaxing December. Well, I'm not, because obviously there's my Advent series to film. I've got other things to do. So not having to vacuum isn't really going to make a huge amount of difference to my life in December. But I will be very, very interested to see how much dirt my Roomba and the Shark handheld picks up. I've got them here, obviously. This is the Shark, a very, very slim little machine with a tiny, tiny capacity and quite an aggressive emptying system. You've got a little button here, so you need to be well over a bin because it can, certain dirt can just fly off everywhere, but you just have to hold it over the bin. Because it's slim, you can hold it right down into the bin and then you press the little release button here. Can you see? and then it flings open, it is empty at the moment. So that needs emptying really after each use. So I'm going to use this for my nooks and crannies. Now it does have a couple of tools with it. So you can use it like this, of course. So if I've got any crumbs on my worktop, like, uh, or I need to remove the toast crumbs from underneath the toaster, I can use it just like this. Or I can attach the crevice tool for going down the sides of my chairs and things and along the skirting board. It's also got a little brush attachment that flips out like that. You can do a little bit of dusting. I don't think I'll be doing much dusting this, uh, this December, but you never know. So there's that, but for upholstery and stairs, and I've used this to clean the stairs and it's pretty effective. You've got this little nozzle here with litter pickers 
either side of the suction outlet and it's pretty good um, you can clean your cushions and things with it it is pretty powerful for such a small cleaner So it can actually support its own body weight with the suction but obviously as i said it's a tiny little unit so after each job i will be emptying it into a bag i'll also be emptying the Roomba into the same bag because obviously it's a joint effort this month so i'm quite looking forward to using this this is a single battery version and you can get one with two batteries as well a battery that comes out um, i'll be fine i think with a single one as long as i keep it charged in this dock <clears throat> it fits in just here like that and the two small tools fit on the back best place for this will be like in your kitchen on the worktop or if you're lucky enough to have a utility room you could put it in there on the worktop it's quite a stylish looking vacuum isn't it very slim so that's going to take care hopefully of all my above floor jobs and for my carpets and floors, we've got this Roomba. I'm not sure what model it is actually, but it does have a scheduling feature. So I can actually program it to come on and do the cleaning. But when I've got two dogs, um, who what, Daisy especially has sometimes done her business in the living room, I don't want that scenario where I've set the Roomba going and it's run over one of Daisy's leavings or one of her wee wees. Uh, that's something you don't want to ever experience. So I think I'll just be turning it on when I need it as and when. But there's a li little maintenance with this one because there's no brush with earlier models. It's just these, uh, I can't remember what they call them, but um, they do do a very good job. I was quite impressed with this when I did, I did a full demo of this. It's not going to be that good on edge cleaning. It does have one edge cleaning brush. But all in all, I'm really pleased you chose this. So thank you for voting for this, if you did vote for the Boomba. I'm sorry for any of you who didn't get the choice, but those vacuums will be featured next year. I certainly, out of the list, I certainly will be doing a full demo of the AEG Precision. The Vax Blade will probably get another demo. The Concept One will. The Bosch definitely will. And the Sebo E3, the Mila will. The Icon, I think, has had quite a lot of coverage already, so you might not see that for a while. The Dyson Small Ball, oops, there we go. <coughs> I set it, I scheduled it to start going during the video and I completely forgot, so. Oh, thank you. Anyway, I'll be setting that up. I think I'll have it in the hall on its dock. And um, yeah, I'm just going to press the button and walk away and let Roomba take care of my carpets and floors. So as I said, tune in January the 1st for the results of that. I don't think somehow it's going to beat the SIBO for dirt pickup, but it'll be very interesting to see exactly how much dirt a robotic vacuum can clean. I've got three floors in this house, mostly carpets, um, hard floor in the kitchen, the ensuite and the bathroom, but I'm going to have to Roomba proof it because like when you bring home a new puppy or if you have a toddler in the house, you need to baby or puppy proof. We have to Roomba proof as well. So you have to make sure that there's no loose cables or fringes off curtains or anything that it can get caught on because the Roomba is going to go under places you probably don't clean all the time. So you need to go everywhere. Um, and just check that there's nothing that's going to get caught up or damaged inside the Roomba. It's, a, it's not something I would recommend for a cluttered home. You've got, if you've got kids with lots of Lego and little bits that are all over the place, it needs to be a home that's normally kept quite clear and free so the Roomba can do its business, so to speak. But anyway, I'm really looking forward to December. It'll be a nice break, cleaning-wise. But in January, I'll have free reign to use lots of different cleaners. I could use several cleaners a day if I wanted to. Um, because as I said, I've enjoyed doing the um, vacuum of the month, but it's time to discontinue that and do something else. 
Well, that's about the end of this video. If you've got any comments or questions, please comment below. I hope you enjoyed my first Advent video that I uploaded earlier today. Tune in same time, same place for the second Advent video. And of course, a new video will be uploaded every day right up to Christmas Eve. And then finally, you'll see my Christmas Day unboxing extravaganza on the 25th. If you'd like to contribute to my Christmas Day video with a small gift or even a large gift, you'll find my Amazon wish list below. Just click on that link and you'll see all the things I've asked Santa for. Um, I'd be very grateful for anything received. Don't forget, if you do buy anything from the wish list, put a gift note in and then I can thank you during the Christmas Day video. So until the next time, which will be tomorrow, I'll see you then. Bye for now.